In this video, I'm going to show you all how I create these mini photography tutorials on Instagram using a combination of Lightroom and Adobe XD. What's up everyone, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So for those of you who have been following me on Instagram, you may have noticed a shift in the type of posts that I've been sharing. Instead of just sharing client work or my portfolio images, I've actually transitioned to sharing mini tutorials on photography, editing, Fujifilm cameras, and the tools that I use in my own creative process. And in order to maximize the value and impact of these mini tutorials, I've been using Instagram carousels or what others also refer to as multi-posts. Basically, Instagram allows you to use a maximum of 10 slides to share whatever you'd like. And for me, I try to use all 10 slides to provide as much knowledge and value as possible. And to create my Instagram carousels, I use two main tools, Lightroom and Adobe XD. I mainly use Lightroom to source cover photos and example images that I've taken that support what I'm teaching in that particular tutorial. And I also use Lightroom to re-edit and recrop the images as necessary to fit the carousel design. From there, I take those photos and use Adobe XD to design each slide of the carousel using a combination of photos, text, graphics, and sometimes even video or animations. Whatever I feel communicates the lesson the best. Okay, so now that you have a brief overview, I'm going to walk you through my design process for a new Instagram carousel post. But before we get into the tutorial, I did want to give a quick shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of classes, including classes on graphic design, business, crafts, and creative software like Adobe XD. So a few months ago, I didn't even know what Adobe XD was, but I wanted to learn all the basic and essential features of the software to design Instagram carousels. And you know what? Skillshare was the perfect place for me to learn about Adobe XD. So I took an Adobe XD class from Daniel Scott that was geared toward actually UX and UI design, which is actually the main purpose of the Adobe XD software. But because my goal was to learn how to use XD to design Instagram carousel posts, I picked out the specific lessons that would be relevant to my needs. Mainly this was artboard creation, typography, working with images, and creating graphical elements and shapes. And the beauty of Skillshare is that the lessons are short in length and you can actually view them on a mobile phone. Basically, you can watch an entire course or just pick lessons that interest you or suit your goals. And again, if you want to learn the ins and outs of Adobe XD, I highly suggest you take Daniel Scott's class. And lucky for you all, the first thousand people who click the link in the description below will get two free months of membership to Skillshare Premium. And if you decide to continue, it's super affordable at less than $10 a month. So be sure to take advantage of this opportunity to expand your content creation skill set. All right, now let's jump into this Instagram carousel design. So the first step is to select the photo for my seamless multi-pose panorama, basically the first two slides of the carousel. So here I like this photo of this awesome Pikachu float from the NYC Thanksgiving Parade. Okay, so this mini tutorial will be about finding six common photo mistakes and what to look out for that can be fixed with simple crops and tilts. So I'm going to go through my Lightroom catalog and find six good examples that showcase these mistakes. And I'm collecting these images by using the B shortcut to send the image to the quick collection of my Lightroom catalog. Okay, now that I'm in my quick collection, I'm going to press control apostrophe or command apostrophe on a Mac to make a virtual copy of all the images. That way the original edits and crops are intact um, as these are actually previously delivered files to clients. And then next I'm going to crop the cover photo to the appropriate size to be a two slide panorama. So basically I'm going to pull up the crop tool by pressing R and then in the aspect ratio drop down I'm going to enter custom and then I'm going to select a two by one. And this will create a two slide panorama. If you want to do a three slide or a four slide panorama then you would do three by one or four by one respectively. And then you can go on all the way up to ten slides if you want to. Then basically here I'm adjusting the crop to my liking and doing some slight edits to the photo since I don't really like how bright the sky is on the right side here. Okay, next I'm going to revert all these edited examples back to their original crop prior to fixing the common photo mistakes. Basically, each image was cropped or tilted in post to be better, so for the sake of tutorial, I need to illustrate the bad version of the original photos. 
Okay, now I, I'm going to export the photos. And for the cover size, it's important to use the dimensions of uh, for the width 2 times 1080 pixels and then on the height of 1080 pixels. And then obviously, if you're gonna have more slides, you're gonna have the width be, you know, for three slides, three times 1080, or, or for four slides, four times 1080, and so on, for however many slides that you have. And then for the remaining example images, I resize them to 1080 on the width when I'm exporting, um, just because that's the biggest I'll ever have it on a square post, is 1080 by 1080. Um, usually I'll resize it to be smaller, but never bigger than this. Okay, so now that all the photos are exported, I'm going to fire up Adobe XD. And the first thing I'm going to do is create an artboard using the artboard tool and make it the dimensions of 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels, as this is the standard Instagram resolution for a square post. Then by going to the left border and the top border, I'm going to click and drag down some guides to be my margins. I usually use 50 pixels as the margins. And now I'm going to include the at RGB photo credit on each slide. Uh, but since I'm lazy for this tutorial, I'm just going to copy it from a previous post I made. Okay, now that I got all that stuff formatted, I'm going to hold down the Alt button or Option on a Mac and click and drag, which duplicates this artboard. I'm going to put it right next to it. And now I'm going to open the folder in Explorer or Finder that has the exported photos and drag the cover image onto the first artboard. And then I'm going to resize it and line it up with the edge right here. Once that's all lined up, I'm going to click and copy it and then select the second artboard and paste it onto there. And then it's going to be misaligned at first, so that we're going to go to the X position of the image and then type in negative 1080 to shift the image over to create that seamless post effect. Okay, now with the type tool, I'm going to start laying down some type for the cover slides. The font and size is up to your choosing, but I typically like to use extra condensed fonts, which are a little bit narrower, and then I also use the black weight. And this is it gonna actually going to help me to have fit more words on the slide with the extra condensed, but also to have a nice bold font to stand out amongst other posts on your feed. If you want to go into deep with the text manipulation controls and all that stuff, um, I definitely would check out the XD Skillshare course as I am definitely not an expert at design or manipulating text on Adobe XD. Okay, now I'm going to add some black rectangles to make the text stand out against the background. And then in the layer side on the left right here, the layer panel, I'm going to drag the rectangle layers below the text so that the white text shows through. And I'm just doing some more designing here. Once everything looks good and lined up to my eye. Okay, now I'm going to copy this and paste it onto the other slide, slide two, and then just re-edit the text for the second slide. As you know, I'm not a designer. I'm a photographer. So a lot of this process is experimentation. And it's pretty inefficient at this point. Um, so I'm going to fast forward it just for your sake of time for watching this tutorial. Okay, now that I got these two slides set up, I'm going to alt click and drag to copy this board over to the third slide and going to get rid of the photo background. Now I'm going to insert the heading of the slide and then center it. It's going to be the bold condensed um, font. And also now I'm going to add a subheading to below to describe the photo mistake a little bit more and center that as well. All right, so now I'm going to add some rectangles, which are placeholders for the images in XD. I resize the rectangles to be three by two pixels at first, which is basically to keep the aspect ratio correct. And then I lock them and then I drag and resize them to what looks good to my eye at first. Okay, so in order to add a photo, you just navigate back to the folder and drag the image into the rectangle that I previously drew and it automatically resizes to fit. Now I'm going to use the line tool to draw the graphical elements which help to illustrate the composition mistakes about cropping and tilting and how it's going to look fixed in the final image. Now we're just doing a little bit more resizing, repositioning, and it's mostly just done to what looks good to my eye as well. It lines up with the Adobe XD visual guides. All right, so now I'm just going to go through and basically copy each artboard over when I go down to the next slide. And I'm just changing the titles and replacing the images with new images and adding the appropriate graphical element, which will illustrate what type of visual thing I'm trying to teach. Again, I'm not going to go too much into exact controls or key commands for this video as I'm trying to show you really my overall process rather than each step because again, I'm still pretty inefficient at using Adobe XD. So this tutorial is very uh, with a lot of errors and wasted time and I actually go back and redesign quite a few things. Okay, so for my second to last slide, I do like to create some checkboxes so that I can have a summary slide. Basically, making a summary slide is a good way to get people to save your Instagram post and boost engagement uh, by getting a lot of saves. And all I'm really doing here is just designing a simple slide that summarizes all the key points from each of the other slides. 
And then for my call to action side, I basically have some bold text that kind of asks people to either comment or like it or leave something uh, to add to the discussion and ultimately share the post with other people. Um, and I, again, I got lazy, so I copied one from my previous Instagram post. And then to wrap things up, you select all the artboards and choose a folder and export them as PNGs to later to send on to my phone and upload and post on Instagram. And this is pretty much my entire Lightroom Adobe XD carousel workflow. So I'm hoping that walkthrough is helpful. And now at least you all know how to design Instagram carousels to the best of my limited design knowledge. If you learned something new in this video, please give it a like and let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions or want to learn more about my content creation process, either for Instagram or making YouTube videos. Because to be honest, I believe content creation is the best way to market yourself as a photographer in today's competitive market. So if you're serious about reaching an audience or having customers find you, you gotta start putting content out into the internet. As always, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already as I make a new Fuji film or photography video every week. And if that's too long for you, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Photo for a new tip, trick, or tutorial post throughout the week. Alright, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you all in the next one.